Getting closer now, getting a lot closer. Now, here we go. Okay, there's been a slight mistake inside of the, um, inside of the lab instructions. And here's the mistake over here. So it's gonna say, come over, it's gonna come over here for the SQL Server 2012 version. And it's going to say right over here, just a quick note, so as you guys are doing the lab over here, it's gonna come over to, let's see where it's at real fast. Do, 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 coming over, coming over, coming over, coming over. And right over here, um, it's gonna say right click in the territory column, right? And then go ahead and click, um, and then go ahead and click delete columns. So watch what happens over here. I'm gonna come back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click right over, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna come inside the territory column. So first left click to go outside to make sure you're outside is what I do. Then left click to go in until you see the gray panels. Then once you see the gray panels, if you just click at the top, that's the actual, um, if you just click on the top over here, that's the actual top column right over there. Now I'm gonna click delete columns right over here and notice over here that, um, notice over here that when I bring this option up right off the bat, there's no option called, there's no options um, um, called delete group only over here. That was a slight lab mistake that was made, um, that was made but that's no problem. Well, um, um, let me explain to you what it means. Here's what, we want, here's what we're trying to do. We don't want to delete the territory group. That's the group that we just added. So no, we're not going to say delete group only on territory group. Anyway, that option's not there anyway, but delete columns and associated groups would have done the same thing. Instead, we just want to delete the column that's displaying so that we take more control of the real estate. But silently in the background, what we're saying is we still want to see things by those distinct members of the group. So we're still going to have three list pages here, one for, one for north, one for south, and one for central. So we tell it delete columns only to go ahead and actually correct the lab, and then we click OK. There we go. Now, the next thing that we do, though, is we, um, we've got two groups over here. Notice that. Now let me show you what happens when I run this. So run over here with two groups. And now we've got nothing, right? But look at all these extra groups. Wait a minute, there's only three distinct values. Why in the world do we have two groups? We shouldn't, we shouldn't. Not, a, not typically in a list report like this. Um, that's not the goal. What you do is you usually add other lists that have their own groups that are grouped by that particular group. That will come, that will come in a later section, of the, later section of these tutorials. So let me click design over here. And instead of that, come back over to, come back over to details now. So inside of the row group panels, click on details because we only want one group. We added it first as a parent. Remember, you need to add it as a parent so that it's scoped properly. By scope properly, what I mean over there is it covers the entire um, real estate of that list and all data that would go inside of it. That's why we make it a parent of details. Then, after one, once our parents add it, we remove the column. Finally, what we do is we come back to that original group. We right-click on it, just like that. Then we come down to delete group and we choose delete group this time for the child group, which was called details, right? Details mean the individual rows. And now what we do is we tell it delete the group only. So this time you say delete group only and now click OK. There we go, that's fixed. Okay, so now we've got it looking the way that it's supposed to be looking. All right, now coming back over here, we need to do a couple more things over here now or, or, or some of our major things, which is the actual formatting at this stage. All right. Now, this is where, you know, we start to see the power of a list. The formatting is probably the first area. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click insert right off the bat. And on insert, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rectangle. There's a rectangle right over there. Now, for right now, the rectangle's not, um, the rectangle's bigger than our actual list data, data source. That was because earlier it's set to adjust the list to make it a lot bigger. So we're going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to make this list just coming back over here and coming back and what I'm doing is I'm going to click inside of the list for just a moment. Left click. I want you to take the list and I'm going to expand it to about, oh, let's say seven inches or so. There we go. There. So there we go. Now the list is about seven inches. And then, you know, just like you had an 11 by 8 page and you wanted a 1 inch margin or something or, 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 or 1 inch free, so that would cover that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the list again and I'm going to expand it to where it's about, oh, 7 inches down the page. So keep on going until I get about 7 inches down the page too or 8 inches. I'll make it 8. They gave you another figure to use inside the lab, but still, you guys see how I'm expanding it? So this is how you expand a list whenever you say, okay, this is the set amount of space I want you to occupy on each page. You can lock that down if you want to. Now, by default, it'll expand anyway with rows, but you can turn that off. So there we go. 
I gave it I gave it eight over here, so I gave it so you guys can see eight inches long, and then I gave it seven inches wide. So I just added that in there to make the list a lot bigger. Now that's my list region. Now what I'm gonna do over here is I'm gonna take my list over here, and I'm gonna bring it down. And by the way, I'm gonna compress the list a little bit later on, so just hang on with me. Um, I'm gonna bring in my um, I'm gonna bring in my rectangle over here, and I'm gonna put it in the upper left corner of the actual list. Now what I'm gonna do over here is once I put it in the upper left corner. I'm going to make it about seven inches long. So I'm going to come down and make it tall. And what I'm doing over here is I'm putting a line on the bottom, almost like a format. It's not quite seven inches. I'm going down, going down pretty much pretty close to the end of the list right over here. So bam, just like that. Then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make it about one inch long. So remember what we learned from the ruler, how you looked at the ruler earlier, and I said you can look at the ruler and size it. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring this line over to about one inch right over there. There we go, just like that. Now, to give it some style, I'm going to put a color in it. So I click inside of the rectangle right over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click inside of the rectangle, which is located in the list, by the way. And then I'm going to click on rectangle properties. Now, what I'm doing over here is I'm using a fill. Very common tactic to be able to, you know, fill a section of a page to give you a pretty format, almost like you do with Word documents and PowerPoints and things like that. So I'm going to put a color on the side that kind of appears as just a long horizontal or a long vertical bar that's going to, you know, show a nice color. So there's fill. There's down arrow right over there. And I'm going to go with slate gray. So I'll bring that down over here. And then I'm going to find slate gray right over. So let me just look for slate gray real quick. And find it, find it, find it, find it, find it. And still looking. There's dark slate gray, but I actually want slate gray to be consistent with the tutorial here. So there's slate gray right over there. Okay, and then I'm going to click OK. Yes, you can just memorize the col colors and just type in the hexadecimal code, which is easier, but um, just by looking them up or something. But, you know, I figured I would do it this way since they j just to go with the report. Okay, now once I've got my slate gray over here, I'm going to click OK. All right, now let me run the report just for a moment. And notice what happens for every single list page. You guys can see that one, two, three. You guys can see over here that those are that's all slate gray. Now there's a footer on the very bottom where a footer, um, there's a little footer row that goes off with just an empty one at the very um, end for the actual report related to the execution time. But other than that though, one, two, we've got three pages, which means three distinct groups for the list. Now there's a fourth page with just some overflow, but that's it. Okay, let's click design over here. This is looking good now. I mean, oh, not really looking good yet, but at least it's starting to look, you know, you know, like a list. Now, I said our big power was that we can really take care of the formatting, right? The formatting can appear for every single page, and we can take care of the sizing within SSRS. So what I'm going to do first over here is I'm going to come over to Design again, inside of our design. I'm going to click on Insert. And let's say that what I want to do is I want to go ahead and actually add a text box this time, okay? And what I want to do is I want to put the text box inside of the list, essentially. So I want to put the text box in here. And what I'm doing over there is I'm putting on the upper left corner, and I'm going to make it three inches tall, five inches wide. And then I'm going to put some information in there that's going to appear on every list page. So let me show you how this is done. Here's the text box right there. So let me just click on it. Sorry about that. Let me bring down the text box now inside the corner. There we go. Then looking at this, we can see the size over here. As you guys can see right there, that's our size, which was about, you know, three-fourths of an inch. I'm going to bring it down to essentially three and three-fourths of an inch. So about three inches, about, about three inches tall. Then I'm going to come down, and I can notice I'm starting at about one inch over here. I need to make it five inches wide, so I'm going to bring it down to about six. There we go. And that's going to give me a three by five type, you know, a three by five or whatever else, or three inches, three inches long and five inches wide um, text box. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to place a cursor inside of here. And then I'm going to type news letter four. So I'm putting some text in there right off the bat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter. And when I hit enter over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the territory field right after this. So I can either drag it afterwards or before. So I put it afterwards. And I might decide that, you know what, there's newsletter four. Maybe I want that all to appear on one line. So let me do that. There we go. Newsletter four. And I'll put it right after that. So what that's going to do is it's going to show the newsletter for the territories. Now remember, the territories are grouped, which means that what's going to happen over here is that this value gets grouped. And, which, and um, uh, um, what that means is it's going to be divided by the distinct value. So, for example, it looks at this as a grouping, and it says, like, if we have one distinct value called south by south, that equals to, you know, well, it would equal to one, but let's just call this south. 
And what that means over here, guys, is that South is going to appear on one page. Central is going to appear on one page. You name it. Let's see that for just a second. So this field is going to be grouped by, by the territory groups, which means by the distinct values. And because there's three different distinct values of territory now, right, and we're looking at it, this is what we're going to actually see. Newsletter for Central. Newsletter for North. Newsletter for South. So now it should start to make sense whenever I say that, ah, oh, look at this. What a list actually does is a list provides us a beautiful way to be able to get what's known as an angle or a perspective, you name it, to be able to see something by one particular sort of value. And you can actually make that even, you can even, you can even make that by more than one particular value if you want to, and we'll be seeing how to do that later. But at the very initial beginning, that's what it does. And it gives us this freeform control. So now we can see everything for central, we can see everything for north, we can see everything for south. Let's go a little bit further. Now I'm going to give it some style, and again, we're going to continue to harp on style and work on it in this course, um, and that's very good just so that you guys can get familiar with the properties and you name it. So for these properties over here, I'm going to come back, and for my actual style over here, I'm going to click on this first. So I'm going to highlight all the text, right-click on it, left-click on text properties. Then what I'm going to do over there is I'm going to click on font, and then on font, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to hit Times New Roman. And then over there, I'm going to make it 20, 20 points. So I'm just making this bigger for the display purposes. And then for the color, I'm going to make it maroon. Now, again, in real life, you'd be choosing this depending upon whatever you need, right? But it's oftentimes a good practice to put something at the very top, which labels each and every single section of data, right? Labels are extremely imp important. So I'm going to just hit OK. There we go. And now, once I finish that, I end up getting, I end up getting newsletter for territory over here. OK. Now that looks